So when Katrina hit New Orleans about 20 years ago, the results clearly they were catastrophic. But without the city's evacuation plans, things have gotten, uh, they could have been a heck of a lot worse. And we're talking about what would have happened if people weren't able to get out of town. They implemented, they implemented uh, contraflow, which is a strategy that involves reversing half the lanes in the road so they all point in one direction, away from the ensuing disaster. It's now become part of the foundation for evacuations when we start to plan them out. Joining me now is the man who first came up with the idea for contraflow, Dr. Brian Wolshon, a civil and environmental engineer professor from Louisiana State University, LSU. <laughs> and thank you so much, sir, for joining me. I really appreciate you being on the show. And this ContraFlow, man, how did you get the idea and when did it come to you? Well, um, actually, the, the idea of reversing uh, lanes for travel has been around for almost even more than 100 years. So it was used sort of when we had cities before we even had freeways for rush hour traffic. So we had a limited amount of roads and we had a lot of people moving either in or out of town. So traffic engineers 100 years ago had the idea to just use all the lanes in that direction. Um, I think what was new and what we worked on a lot here with the Louisiana Department of Transportation, with the Louisiana State Police, was using it for emergency purposes. Mm -hmm. And that was a big innovation at the time. How did you develop it even more? Did you run computer simulations? I mean, how did you get it to be perfected? Yeah, so what was interesting is that there was an original plan uh, that was used in Hurricane Ivan in 2004, and it was very apparent that there were uh, limitations, we'll say, in mm -hmm. that plan. The idea when you're evacuating is to constantly keep traffic moving and to not slow it down. The original plan had some bottleneck points in there, and what we did is we were able to look and find ways to improve uh, those bottleneck points. And again, the, um, through using, turning actually um, on ramps into uh, the off ramp direction to keep mm -hmm. traffic flowing was one of the big innovations. And it's sort of like just a room or, or any other um, space that you want to evacuate in an emergency. What you want to try to do is open as many doors as possible. And if the doors aren't enough, sometimes you got to use the window. So that's what we were <laughs> saying use every possible means to get people out i mean i love it it sounds so intuitive for sure but then you've got to go through federal and state departments to get this thing done how did you weave through that red tape yeah well that okay so what's very interesting about this is it takes a very collaborative cooperative effort not just between police and departments of transportation, but also looking across different states from city to state. And, and then it's also important to communicate that to people. Mm -hmm. So in terms of implementing it, that's the state police here in Louisiana um, and the Department of Transportation. And that's similar um, to several states around the country. They have this plan in their, in their back pocket and if conditions get bad enough, they plan to use it. I agree. Doctor, this is so great, too. And this is you first got this going for Hurricane Katrina. Which roads were we talking about that were went contra flow? OK, so if you look at a map of New Orleans and I love your maps, uh, you guys do a good job of showing those. Thanks. New Orleans is a is a is a metropolitan area, about a million and a half people. But if you look at the high capacity routes, I-10 and the Causeway Bridge, they're over water. And then the other routes are going to the south, which you don't want to take people into a path of a hurricane. So the idea here was to best utilize the available capacity of the routes that exist. So that was mainly I-10 from New Orleans moving towards Baton Rouge, and then I-10 on the east side of town moving into uh, Mississippi. So what's interesting is that when there is an evacuation of the city of New Orleans, it affects Mississippi. It affects the whole state of Louisiana. And it can even, you see evacuees that will even move to Houston and to mm -hmm. Memphis and Shreveport and out of state. So, um, so it's a pretty big undertaking. So you're doing a 90 degree angle from where it was coming in. You weren't really worried about I-55 or like I-59 that runs north south. You wanted them to get the heck out of the way laterally. Yeah, yeah. Well, but all of those routes, the I-10 routes, feed into I-55 and I-59. Gotcha. So the idea is is um, is to best utilize um, uh, the road network, the available capacity in the road network, to get people out of the bowl, as they call it. Because a lot of New Orleans, as you see on your screen, is below 
low sea level. Mm -hmm. So there's not much choice. We can't have people staying behind when it's a bad condition, a Category 3 or um, or greater storm, that city needs to be evacuated. People need to listen to those uh, advisories, those warnings. It's amazing. And how did it feel? Take you back 20 years ago is the last question. How did it feel when you saw the ContraFlow be implemented and when it, you saw signs that it was working? How did that make you feel? Yeah. So what's interesting is a lot of times, you know, um, in the news, the good stuff doesn't necessarily get reported. And for good reason. We want to always try to improve. But it's sort of rare, I guess, um, in my field, being a professor, and you can see my class uh, behind, <laughs> behind yeah. me on both sides. Um, it's really gratifying to know that the work that I'm doing and that these kids are doing is really having an impact and it's saving lives. So we're thrilled about it. We do work all over the, the United States, all over the, all over the world, and it's because of, of, um, of students like this and uh, the work that we're doing here at LSU. I love it. Doc, thanks for taking the time out and talking to us. I appreciate it. you got the students behind you. Does my man have a Clemson yeah. shirt on behind you? That's not Clemson. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, make sure you give us good weather over there in Clemson, <laughs> South Carolina. Go Tigers. You know what? Listen, I got Go Tigers as well. My wife with the Clemson. We're going to the game, so it's the Go G-O no. without the E-U-X. So. <laughs> no. We got the real Death Valley. We're, yeah, we're going to win. All right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time out, Doctor. Tell everybody who said hello, right, man. Good you. stuff. Good thank stuff. Thank you very much.